the club. Dear fellow. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, well, what's happened? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. A ghost? <laughs> brandy, that's what I need, brandy. Brandy, brandy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who struck you? Well, you said it yourself. It was a ghost, and without any previous warning at all, he hit me in the eye. <laughs> Wait a minute, here's another. I think you'd better have another. Well, uh... mm. yeah. uh, Thank you. And now I'll begin again. Who struck you? Upon my words, Holmes, it was a ghost. The ghost. Huh? Uh, do you have a headache, Watson? It may seem humorous to you, but I mean, look, let me tell you from the beginning. Yes, please do, but, but start right at the beginning. Right, uh, well, I was on my way back from the club. You see, it was about um, eight o'clock. And I got him to spend the street, and I was just obviously that little tobacconist. You know, makes that Yes, yes, skill. I know, yes. Uh, go on, Watson. What, what did you do then? Well, I saw a man in front of me suddenly clutch his chest. He was walking towards you? How do you know? Well, I mean, you said he staggered and clutched his chest. You must have been... Uh... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's logical. Anyway, yeah. yes, well, anyway, I rushed up to him to help him, you see, and he, he's still able to mumble something about it. Oh, uh, he had a heart, and he lived in 19 Hooper Street, mm -hmm. and uh, would I help him get there? But there were no other pedestrians? No, no, the street was completely deserted. Good, go on. Well, then um, his landlady let us in, and he was unconscious by that time, so I carried him up to his room, and I laid him out in his bed, and Holmes, he was dead. Now, look here, Holmes, he was absolutely, completely, and utterly dead. I couldn't make a mistake about a thing like that. No, 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 of course you couldn't, old man. No, no. Go on, then. What happened next? Well, uh, th then I told the land... Uh, the landlady, rather, said to me that, that she, she'd call the authorities, you see, and I left my name with her just in case, you know, they'd want me. And uh, 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 then, well, well, I thought it would be rather more delicate if I left, you see. I mean, he must have relations. Yes, with... yes, yes, it's quite right, quite right, Watson. The most delicate situation. Yeah. Uh, so what was the man's name? Uh... uh Higgins. Albert Higgins. Uh-huh. I see. And uh, what did you do after you left the house? Well, you see, it had been a bit of an effort, you know, carrying him up like that, so I got down the stairs and yeah. popped across the road into a pub yeah. and, and had a pint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and then I started off ba ba back to the flat, you see? Well, I just turned the corner into Spender Street and there was... Uh, was, there was uh, Higgins, Albert Higgins? Was, yeah, he just face to face with me. He really was the largest life. We stood looking at each other for a minute, and then he lashed out and hit me in the eye. And then, then, then really, Holmes, he vanished. Vanished? Yes, into the blue. Well, he just ran away. Well, the street was rather ill-lit, you know, and it took me a minute or two to pull myself together. <laughs> and, and, and then I don't know whether he ran away or not, but, but he vanished. Well, that's uh, most unusual. Most? Uh, did you speak to this uh, ghost? Well, I, I may have said, uh, good gracious Higgins, or by Jove Higgins, or even uh, good, good heavens Higgins. Oh, yeah, it's perfectly natural, Watson. Uh, uh, describe Higgins to me. Well, he's, uh, 50 -ish. Sandy-haired, medium build. Well, he, he said all you observed, and no characteristics. Well, now, really, Holmes, when I had the chance of examining him on the bed, the most obvious characteristic was he was dead. <laughs> How was he dressed? Uh, green tweed suit. What? Just, just wearing a green tweed suit? He must have been wearing something more than that in this weather. Oh, oh no, 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 he had a big floppy hat and a long overcoat. Ah. Oh, oh, and something else. Yes, I did notice something else. He limped. Aha. And was he carrying a cane? Mm, no, no cane. Well, is there anything else, Watson? Think hard. Mm, um, uh, oh, yes, yes, I remember something now. What? Yes, the, the, the second time I saw him, he was carrying a package. But the first time, he didn't have one. Ah, now this is curious. Very curious. Where are you going, Holmes? Not me. We. I'm in no condition to leave the house. Then a morsel of raw beef will immeasurably improve your appearance. And then what? Then we shall do our best to track down the belligerent ghost of Albert Higgins. Fascinating idea, don't you think? Well, the whole thing's been most unnerving, you know. I mean, he knocks the wind out of the chat. Yes, oh, we really no. <laughs> There's also a rather flamboyant character by the wide, rakish brim. I see he was an artist, too. Well, he hasn't painted very much recently. Notice the specks of paint underneath the brim here. And not house paint, but canvas oils. Here, what's this? Who are you, Jensen? What are you doing in poor Albert's room? Oh, good evening, Mrs. Blake. You remember me, Dr. Watson? Uh, you're the bloke who bought poor Albert in. Yes, yes. Who's your gentleman friend? Ah, this is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Mrs. Maggie Blake, the landlady. 
pleased to meet you, I'm sure, Mr. Holmes. Oh, poor old Albert. He was proper fond of life, Albert was. He wouldn't have popped off if he'd had his way. Oh, few of us would, madam. I was around at the local having me good night pint. And grieving for poor old Albert. He would have wanted a proper send-off with a pint of mild and bitter Albert would. No doubt he would, madam. The body, I see, has been removed by the authorities. Oh, poor old Albert on a slab. Oh, oh dear, dear. Uh, have, you, have you notified his next of kin, uh, Mrs. Blake? No. He had none. He was all alone. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, where was Mr. Higgins employed, madam? At the Pembroke Museum, right around the corner in Spender Street. It's a picture museum. Albert was a day watchman. Uh, a day watchman, you say? Uh, well, what were his working hours? Nine in the morning till nine in the evening. Punctual as a clock, Albert was. Never late a minute. Poor Albert. He always came back from the museum then, at a few minutes after nine every evening. Aye, to make his supper. He was a proper good cook, Albert was. Excuse my saying so, madam, but aren't you mistaken? Surely it's a little after eight when Mr. Higgins finished work. Because it was only a little after eight when I picked him up this evening and brought him here. Oh, no, Doctor. It was just after nine. I marked the time because I was waiting for Albert to come back. He had asked me to get him a cut of beef. He always came back just after nine. He'll never eat that beef now. Poor Albert won't. Oh, it's you in the eye. Hmm? Oh, no, no, no. I, I just, uh, <laughs> just bumped into a door. Oh. You shouldn't get familiar with the door. If you know what I mean. Well, really, madam. Yes, I, I think we've found it all we can for the time being, Watson. Mm. Thank you, madam. We shan't intrude on your grief any further. Poor old Albert. He really is most embarrassing about this eye, Holmes. Did you hear? She inferred. It's a terrible situation. And she's wrong about the time. It was only a little after eight. And it's only a few minutes' walk to spend the street. Yes. Time is a curious dimension, Watson. Habit and a preconceived notion can so easily reverse the hands of a clock. And yet the clock is still in perfect working order. Where are we, where are we going? To view the mortal remains of poor old Albert Higgins. <laughs> Well, there he is, Mr. Holmes. Nice and peaceful, I gave. Poor chap. Hmm. See anything, Holmes? Mm, nothing that I haven't already deduced. Except that I drew an erroneous conclusion from his hat. He has painted recently, but indoors with his hat off. There are still traces of paint quite fresh under his fingernails. What does that mean? I haven't the faintest idea. Mm. Well, you gents aren't the only ones interested in this dearly departed. Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yards looked him over, too. Oh, indeed. Oh, he's still here if you'd like to talk to him. Well, that should be very informative for one or the other, or both of us. I can't understand it, Holmes. I'm absolutely sure this is the man who punched me. I'm positive. But also the one who had the heart attack? Yes, I'm sure of it. One and the same. <laughs> well, he's punched his last punch. Well, he probably is there punching him. Full of holes with pitchforks. <laughs> yes, well, I think we've seen and heard enough. Would you like to take us to Inspector Lestrade now, please? Ah, hello, Inspector. Oh, Sir Holmes, I'm surprised to see you here. Now, this is one case you can't make anything queer out of. Oh, then why, my dear Inspector Lestrade, are you here? Well, when they brought him in, somebody recognized him as Pound-Node Albert Higgins. I come along to check their identification. We like to keep a track of our old pal, you know. What was he in prison for? Counterfeiting. He made the best pound note you ever saw. Yes, he was a real artist. Lestrade, there's no doubt as to the cause of death, is there? Oh, sorry, Holmes. Heart failure, no foul play. I understand you were with him in his last moments. Yes, I was with him on the street when he had the attack and I took him home. There was nothing you could do, I suppose. Nothing. He was dead before I had a chance to do anything. Mm. By the way, what time was he brought in? Oh, let me see now. It would be about, um... Ah, yes, here we are. Quarter to ten. Higgins' landlady notified Constable Smithers at half past nine. 
Smithers had them remove the body in a matter of minutes. Inspector, are you sure it was half past nine and not half past eight? No, half past nine is right here in Smithers' report. Why? Oh, I... Well, I... No, it's nothing, nothing at all. You're quite sure, Lestrade, there's nothing more to this than a simple case of natural causes. Ah, no, there's no mystery at all. No mystery, Mr. Holmes. What happened to your eye, Dr. Watson? Hmm? Oh, I, I uh, bumped into a door. A door? <laughs> oh, well, that's a new one anyway. Was it a pretty door? No, really, Lestrade. <laughs> that's all right, Watson. I won't. Tell us so. <laughs> well, really, this is insufferable, Holmes. Nobody believes me. Well, why did you tell them the truth? What, that I was punched by a ghost? Yes, yes, I see what you mean. We may have to take on this case anyway, if only to protect your honor and reputation. Well, it's intolerable, Holmes. Absolutely intolerable. Watson? Mm. Anything wrong? No, nothing, nothing. Of course not, every night. Oh, you're sure you're not brooding over last night's affair, are you? Of course I'm not. Don't be so ridiculous. Oh, come on, out with it, man. Well, I... No, there's nothing to come out with. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, Watson. There's something on your mind. Well, I... Gosh, you'd never believe it. Nobody would believe it. Well? Well, I met Albert Higgins in Spender Street again, tonight. And he punched you again? He pulled my nose! Really? Very, very interesting, Watson. Dear Watson, calm yourself. Look here, Holmes. This whole Higgins affair has gone too far. First of all, last night and now tonight. Calm yourself, Watson, and relate. Everything hangs on this second encounter. Well, it occurred just as it had last night. I was on my way back from the club and I'd reached Spender Street. It was a few minutes ago, as a matter of fact, just after nine o'clock. I'd stayed rather later in the club than usual. There was a chap from Afghanistan. They were awfully interesting. Uh, yes, yes, Watson. Get on with his story. Well... I was rather preoccupied, as you know. This affair's cut me up, rather, and uh, all the high men are cherry. There, anyway, I, I was going, walking along, I suddenly looked up, and there was the pedestrian, a man a few feet from me. Walking towards you? Oh, yes. Of course, I didn't recognize him straight away for uh, you-know-who. Anyway, I sidestepped him past, and he sidestepped to let me pass, and then we sort of zigzagged about a bit, you know what it is on the street, and ended up by bumping into each other. Now, that's when you recognized Albert Higgins? But it was Higgins! I couldn't be mistaken! Good heavens, man, I know him like my own brother! Uh, dressed as he was last night? Exactly! And what did he do then? Well, as I told you, then he put out his hand and he... Well, yes, we'll go into that. And then he was gone. Vanished. Capital, Watson. Capital. Everything begins to fall into place. Now, there's one more question. Was he carrying a package? Well, um, mm, yeah, yes, he was, just like last time. I say, Holmes, do you, um, do you believe, uh, What? The supernatural? Uh, ghosts, do you mean? <laughs> it sounds silly, I know, no. but, um, Higgins did die of a heart attack. There was no foul play. No foul play? Why, the whole affair reeks of foul play. I can tell you, Watson, I haven't been idle today. Do you know that the Pembroke Museum is showing a collection of paintings on loan from the Italian government, and that included amongst those paintings is Leonardo da Vinci's Moonlight Madonna? Well, I did read something about it in the paper. What's that got to do with Albert Higgins? Well, we must now pay a visit to the good inspector and inform him that if the ghost of Albert Higgins hadn't struck you in the eye... And pulled my nose. And pulled your nose. I would never have suspected the Moonlight Madonna would be stolen from the museum. What? Well, it's quite obvious, isn't it? Well, of course. Thank you. Well, we'll soon know, Mr. Holmes. 
But if the picture's still hanging in its place and we've dragged the curator out of bed to check on it, well, false alarms like this don't exactly help the Yard's reputation, you know. And what about my reputation, Inspector? When I say a man died a little after eight, he died a little after eight and not a little after nine. And when I say these ghosts punched me in the eye half an hour later, hang it, he punched me in the eye. Well, we all have our off days, Dr. Watson. To err is human, as the poets say. And furthermore, if I tell you that I bumped into this chap's ghost again tonight... You didn't he... tell me about any second meeting. Oh. Oh, didn't I? Well, nothing. Nothing. An hallucination. That's what you had, Dr. Watson. Yes, it's, um, psychological. That's well, the thing in crime today, psychology. I've been studying it, you know. You astonish me, Inspector. Oh, we're not as backwards as you think, Holmes. Now, we like to keep abreast of the times. Though I don't mind admitting I don't think the psychology's got much of a future. Oh, come in. Ah, Hawkins, you saw the curator? Oh, yes, sir. I called him, Mr. Bentham, as you instructed, sir. He was quite excited when I told him this picture called the Moonlight Madonna had been stolen. And? And so we rushed around the corner to the museum. And? Well, sir, the picture was there, hanging in its proper place. Good night, sir. Well, there you are, Holmes. As I said to Dr. Watson, to err uh, is human. Can I give you gentlemen a lift anywhere? Hmm. Thank you, Inspector. Oh, I think it might be a good idea if we called at the Pembroke Museum on our way. But you heard what Hawkins said. The picture was hanging in its proper place. My dear Lestrade. Hawkins' statement merely proves that what he and the curator saw was not the Moonlight Madonna at all. Merely an excellent forgery. <laughs> What's he talking about? Art, ghosts, my black eye, and psychology. Remarkable, remarkable. Only a microscopic examination of the brush stroke shows it any different from Da Vinci's work. Of course, if you still have any doubts, you, a chemical analysis of the paint mixtures will prove them to be of modern manufacture. No, no, no. You've quite convinced me, Mr. Holmes. An analysis is necessary. Dear me, dear me, this is catastrophic. Mm. A rather delicate situation, eh? Delicate? <laughs> the Italian government will hold the British government responsible. But the painting is an Italian national treasure. And the theft could easily affect the pending treaty between the two nations. Mr. Holmes, Mr. Holmes, you must find the original before the Italians learn the painting's been stolen. The British government will hold me responsible. And the Yard will hold me responsible. Oh, the most prices of the lot, too. Yes, naturally. Well, we know who stole the painting and substituted a forgery, Higgins. All we've got to do now is find out where he hid it. Hmm. What time did you leave the museum, Mr. Benson? Well, uh, a few minutes before nine. Higgins was still on duty. You're uh, quite sure it was Higgins? I'm certain, Mr. Holmes. I chatted with him for a few moments, and uh, I couldn't have mistaken his voice. And the night watchman relieved him at nine. Well, you heard him say that, Mr. Holmes, and that he had a package with him when he left. The night watchman swears uphill and down dale it was Higgins, all right. Well, the matter seems to resolve itself very nicely, doesn't it? Dr. Watson was punched by Higgins a few minutes after nine. The night watchman saw him leave at nine. And you spoke to him a few minutes before nine. Look, Holmes, why don't you and Dr. Watson go home and have a good night's rest? From now on, it's nothing but plain, ordinary, simple police work. Nothing you could use a magnifying glass on. Ah, true. True, Inspector. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Yes, well, good night, gentlemen. <laughs> What do we do now? Interesting affair, eh, Watson? 
Look, I don't care what anybody says. It was after eight when Higgins punched me. Well, has it occurred to you that if Higgins didn't punch you, who had the heart attack? When I look here, Holmes, I... Oh, confound it. For all I know, it was Higgins who punched me and his ghost had the heart attack. <laughs> Come on, Watson. Tell me what we're breaking into. Shh, whisper. But well, I am whispering. Oh, God, Look here, we broke into the rear of the museum because if so, Holmes, really I don't know what's going to happen to us. Here, hold this. What? Oh. Yes, well, then there must be a bit of a vandalism. Oh, Holmes, what are you doing? This is wanton destruction. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I forbid you to. I didn't know this side of your character, Holmes. I'm shocked. Ah, just as I thought. Love was. Good heavens, but more like Madonna. Yes, ingenious, isn't it? And yet, what could be simpler than to attach it to the back of an old another painting? How on earth did you work there, well, I just asked myself where I would hide a stolen canvas. Uh -huh. Holmes, have you gone mad? No, 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 no. We're just to wait events. I don't think we should have to wait very long. Hmm. Holmes, Dr. Watson, what's the meaning of this? Watson, I believe you've already met Mr. Bentham in his capacity as curator of the Pembroke Museum. Allow me to present him to you now as the picture thief. Charm, Dr. Watson. Oh, delighted. I... What is this? So you discovered my little hiding place, Mr. Holmes. I'm curious. How did you know it was I and not the late lamented Higgins? Yes, I believe Dr. Watson's story from the first. If Higgins died at a little after eight, it must have been someone else who struck him a little after nine. But it was Higgins who punched me home. Don't know, Watson. It was a limp, a wide, floppy hat, and an exceedingly long overcoat that punched you, seen in a dimly lit street. A psychological misidentification, as the good inspector would call it. The night watchman was also a victim of the same illusion. And um, what about the landlady? How much did you have to pay her to set back the time of death by an hour, Mr. Bentham? Oh, not much, Mr. Holmes. How did you know it was me? Dr. Watson and the night watchman both identified the nine o'clock Higgins visually at a distance. Only you pretended to have spoken to him. This meant that either you were lying or Dr. Watson was punched in the eye by a ghost. I believe the simple explanation. You almost make me feel transparent, Mr. Holmes. To anyone who viewed the facts objectively, you were. It's a pity that one crime has to lead to another. Yes, and I think it's a great pity, Holmes, that you broke that vase. Oh, yes, yes, but it's uh, only an imitation. Nonsense, you can't tell me that that sort of work like this is an imitation. Perhaps the piece is convinced. Well done, Watson, well done. You know, Holmes, you didn't have to invite him here to catch us. You put us in rather an awkward position. Oh, my dear fellow, I have sublime confidence in your ability to extricate us from any predicament in which my rations may place us. Uh, might I suggest that you now fetch the good inspector? Yeah, here you are. Yeah. Excuse me. I say, Holmes, Bentham punched me in the eye. Who was it tweaked my nose? Well, my dear old chap, it was absolutely imperative that I make certain that the limp, the hat, and the coat were really capable of fooling you. You? Yes, I regret to say I not only tweaked your nose, but I also pulled your leg. Oh, 